In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can edit like Eman Gatsi's new style. And specifically, I'm going to be showing you guys how I recreated this edit from his recent YouTube video in Adobe After Effects. Just a quick mention, if you are a beginner or intermediate video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video editing product skill cut through the top link in the description below. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to name my new Eman Tutorial 2. I'm then going to import the assets which I'm going to be using today. You can find a link to them in the description below. I'm then just going to create a new solid and I'm going to make it a slightly lighter version of black, so a very, very dark gray. Now I'm going to actually create the uh, background, the moving background, but the problem is I looked all over the internet for the actual like one he used and I know how to make it. It would just take way too long and it's a definitely a different type of like tutorial showing you guys how to do that versus showing you guys how to edit like Iman Gatsi. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a close version of it which is I've got this like moving paper animation which I found on YouTube and you can find a link to this in the description below and I'm this is not going to be the same thing but it's going to like represent the same moving background and in a way it is actually quite similar to the original thing he used as well. So I'm going to import that over the solid. I'm going to scale up so it fits the rest of the composition and I'm going to change the mode to soft light. And as you can see, there's a paper moving um, animation. And actually I'm going to darken the thing because the background is a bit light. So I'm going to go up to layer then solid settings and I'm just going to make the um, background just a tiny bit darker. And as you can see, now we have this. Then I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to time, then time stretch, and I'm going to change the stretch factor to 30%. And as you can see, now it's moving faster. And actually I'm going to change that stretch factor to 40%. So, and then it moves a tiny bit slower. I'm then going to import the dollar bill that I found on FreePick. You can again find this in the assets in the description below. And actually this is the exact same dollar bill that was in his original video. I'm just going to scale it up and position it where I want it to be. And I'm going to add the tint effect onto this and I'm going to um, map black to blue. And as you can see now it has the same blue tint that the original video has. And now I'm actually going to animate this dollar bill and make it like wave, I guess like move and wiggle around like it did in the original video. It's going to have that kind of wave effect. And to do this, I'm going to search up in the effects and presets wave, and I'm going to add the wave warp effect onto this dollar bill. I'm going to uh, decrease the wave height to around four and I'm just going to increase the wave, wave width until it's maybe got around three like quite long bumps at the bottom, I guess you could say, or until it's around 100. And it doesn't have to be the exact same as the original video, but I think this is quite similar. Now I'm happy with that. I'm also going to make it so and then the dollar bill separates into four pieces. So to do that, I'm going to like highlight and click on the actual um, the dollar bill. Then I'm going to go up to this rectangle tool at the top and I'm just going to go to the middle and I'm going to drag from the middle to the top left. And as you can see now, it's going to separate from the rest. Then I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to delete the old mask. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but now from the middle to the top right. So now we've got two layers. We've got the top left and the top right. And we're going to do this for the other two as well, the bottom left and the bottom right. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to delete the mask and I'm going to go from the middle to the bottom right. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom left. So I'm just going to duplicate it, delete the mask, and I'll drag from the middle to the bottom left. So now we have four individual pieces, but there is this kind of bigger gap in the middle part here. So I'm just going to move them these this one on the uh, top left a bit closer to the middle. And as you can see, now there's like very um, like faint lines. But if you go back to the original video, you will see that the original video also started off with like the um, faint lines in the dollar bill as well. Now I'm actually going to separate each section. And to do this, I'm just going to go to the start and I'm going to highlight all of the layers, which are like the, the four like layers associated with the money bill. And I'm just going to keyframe the position at the start. Then I'm going to go forward by around maybe two seconds. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to separate each layer. So there is now like a gap in between every dollar bill. And I'll do that for all of them until there's actually like this almost cross in the middle of the dollar bill. And there's like this gap basically. But actually I want to make the gap between each of them bigger. So I'm just going to drag each one further apart as well. So now there is a bigger like cross, I guess. And now I'm happy with this. I'm actually going to add the like the dotted lines, I guess the um the dashed lines um in between the actual like dollar bills. So I'm going to get to the pen tool at the top. And before I do anything, I'm going to turn off the fill and I'm going to increase the stroke to around 10% or 10 pixels. And the color is going to be white as well. And I'm going to add a point and then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to add another point like over here. 
on the other side and I'm going to make another point with a new line like a new layer like starting from the left side all the way to the right like so actually I'm just going to make sure everything's in the middle as well actually I'm going to increase the pixels to 12 I'll do that for both of them and actually no I'll increase it to 13 because it's still not um, thick enough and yeah I'm happy with this so now I'm actually going to make the like the lines actually dashed so I'm going to open this arrow up I'm going to open up contents then shape one then stroke one and I'm going to press twice on the actual plus next to the dashes and then I'm going to play around with the dash and gap and offset until it looks like how I want it to look so I'm going to increase the gap and I'm going to increase the dash as well so and then it looks like it did in the original video but yeah you'll just have to play around with this and I'm going to do the same thing with the other one so I open up the same settings but and then I'll change the um the amount and like the dash and the gap until it looks uh, like it did in the original video for this line as well so yeah i'm pretty happy with that but the thing is if you go back to the original video you'll see right in the middle that there isn't they don't like overlap weirdly they overlap well and um essentially like you want almost like a part where there's like this square of like no lines i guess in the middle and it's like the lines don't overlap in the middle so i'm just going to adjust the offset which is basically going to actually change where the lines are it's not going to increase the gap or increase the lines it's just going to actually change where the lines are so i'm just going to play around with the offset until it looks like it did in the original video and yeah i am happy with this now so now i'm actually going to animate the lines as well so i'm going to open up the uh, arrow and i'm going to click add and then i'm going to click trim paths and then i'm going to open up the trim paths in the settings underneath i'm going to keyframe the end at zero percent at the start and I'll do the same thing with the second line as well. So I'll open up trim paths and I'm going to keyframe the end at 0% at the start. And now the lines have gone, but now I'm going to make them come back in. So I'm going to go forward by around one or two seconds. And then I'm going to just increase the end to 100% there and the end to 100% here as well. I'm just going to adjust the keyframes a bit as well. And I'll make sure that both of them are like aligned with each other around two seconds in. And as you can see, when I play that back, the lines come in like they did in the original video. Now I'm actually going to add the text, so I'm going to go forward to where I, want, where I want the text to come in and I'm going to get the text tool and I'm going to type up at the top in the Forever Freedom regular font how to invest your money and I'm going to make sure that the fill colour is white and I'm just going to scale it up and position it where I want it to be. So I'll put it around here but and then I'll raise it so and then it's actually above the line so it doesn't overlap with the line and it's around here. Then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets typewriter and I'm going to add this onto the text. Then I'm going to press U to actually show the automatic keyframes it's made for me. And the start and end keyframes are going to show like when, how long it takes it to actually type right, I guess. And I'm just going to make the that gap between the two keyframes a lot smaller. So and then it types a lot faster. And then I'm going to go forward to around three seconds and I'm just going to keyframe the position. Then I'm going to go back to the start and I'm going to basically add another position keyframe and I'll move the actual position of the text so and then it's on the right side of the screen and this is going to create the same like typing effect that i did in the original video so when i play that back as you can see it moves from right to left and it's going to also type from left to right i'm then just going to highlight the position keyframes and i'll press f9 just so the movement is a bit smoother like it was in the original video now i'm actually going to create the little um triangles which came in from the left side of the screen in the original video. So I'm just gonna get the pen tool and I'm going to create a triangle similar to the one in the original video. But I'm going to make the stroke zero and I'll make the fill color like a blue color like this, a similar one to the one applied on the dollar bill. And I'm just gonna position it where I want it to be, which is like next to the text in the middle aligned with the middle of the actual how to invest your money text. But I'll adjust the color slightly and I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to move this duplicated one over to the left like this so it's next to it and then I'm going to duplicate it again I'll do the same thing so now there's three of them like so I'm actually going to make these ones move now so I'm going to go to around two points in and I'm going to keyframe the position of all three of these triangles then I'll go back to the start and I'll highlight all three of these layers and I'll just move the position so and then they start in the left part of the screen like so then I'm going to highlight all six of these keyframes I'll press f9 I'll go into the graph editor and I'm just going to create a um, a steep peak in the middle with the graph. So then it will start off slow, then go fast and then slow. And then this will make everything just look a lot smoother. And this was what it was like in the original video as well. But I'm just going to make the graph a lot steeper because the movement was a lot more harsh in the original video. And as you can see, now it moves like it did in the original video. But the thing is, in the original video, they moved at different points, like they came in at slightly different points. So I'll go to the start and then I'll move forward by around five frames. And then I'll move the like 
the arrow next to the first one over to this point and then I'll move forward by another five frames and then I'll move the th uh, third arrow to this point as well. So when it goes the first arrow, then the second, then the third. Now I'm going to make them all like flicker in like they did in the original video. So I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% of the start. Then I'll go forward by a bit and I'll make it 100. And actually I'm going to make it so and then it's two forwards from the first one. So I'll go two, two frames forward. I'll make that, f that um, second keyframe there. Then I'll go forward two frames again and I'll make the opacity zero. Then I'll go forward two frames again and I'll make the opacity 100. And then I'm going to copy all these keyframes and I'll paste them like this. So and then they duplicate again. And as you can see now it like flickers in. And then I'm going to copy, copy all of the, um, I think it's like seven keyframes I've just made. And then I'm just going to um, keyframe the opacity at the start of the second layer. I'll make it start at 0%. And then I'm just going to paste the six keyframes like onto this point as well. So and then this one flickers the same way as well. And I'll do the same thing with the third triangle as well. So I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% at the start and I'll paste the keyframes we've just made. So now all three of these triangles will flicker in. Now I'm actually going to create the um, like the correctly red box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, um, the rectangle tool and I'm just going to make a rectangle roughly the right size around here. We can always adjust the size after though. I'll make the fill color red and then I'm going to basically rotate it so and then it's the same rotation as in the original video which is around like this or maybe minus six. Then I'm going to position it where I want it to be and I'm going to get the text and I'm just going to type up correctly all in capitals um, and I'm going to scale it up and I'm going to change the fill color to black. Then I'm just going to change the rotation of the correctly text so it's the same as the, um, the box so which is minus six. And then I'm going to scale it down and then I'm just going to make the text not so tall. So I'll just do this and I'll decrease the like vertical height. Then I'm just going to position it so it's in the middle of the red box. And yeah, this is pretty much what I want it to look like. And then I'm going to actually make it so and then it starts where I want it to start, which is around two and a half seconds in. Then I'm going to highlight both of these layers, the text and the box, and I'm just going to make them 3D. And I'm going to keyframe the position like at this point two, two and a half seconds in. Then I'm going to go forward by around a second, add another keyframe, I'll go back to the original one and I'll just make it so and then it moves closer to the camera by moving the um the like the third set of like numbers. So and then they are now smaller on in the negatives. So if I play this back, as you can see, it will like very, it's really not enough, but it will just slowly move from closer to the camera to closer to the actual text. But we need to make this like move a lot more. So I'm just going to go to that point and I'll make sure they're both highlighted and I'll just move it so and then it's closer, like all the number is smaller or closer to the camera. Then I'm just going to highlight these keyframes and I'm going to adjust the graph so that there is a, um, like not really steep, but there is a peak at the start of the graph. So now when I play this back, as you can see, it moves like it did in the original video. It's like getting stamped onto the actual text, which is quite cool. But I'm just going to adjust the actual like intensity of the movement just a bit more as well by making it even more negative. Now it's around almost minus 300 and I'm just going to space out the keyframes a bit so and then they take a bit longer to move so yeah now we've got this and this looks pretty similar to the original videos and now I'm just going to make it fade in so I'm going to keyframe the opacity at zero percent at the start for both of them and then I'm just going to go forward by around like 10 frames or so and I'll make it 100 so now as you can see it gets stamped on and it fades in like so and also in the original video everything scaled out at the start so it like zoomed out a bit and to do that I'm going to create a new adjustment layer but it didn't actually get applied onto the actual how to like invest your money text, but it got applied onto everything else, like the dollar bill and everything. So I'm just going to move the how to invest your money text up to the top and I'm going to make the adjustment layer above the correctly. So it, it's above everything apart from the how to invest your money text. Then I'm going to add the transform effect onto this adjustment layer. I'm going to keyframe the scale at the start. Then I'm going to go forward by around a second or so. And I'm just going to add another keyframe for the scale. Then I'll go back to the original scale keyframe and I'll just scale it up to like 117 or something. I shall make it 115 and I'll highlight these keyframes. I'll press F9 and I'll just create a steep peak at the start with the graph like so. So now it will like zoom out in a quite smooth way. It is quite subtle, but that's what it was like in the original video. So I'll do it too. And actually now I'm just going to add a few like little things to the video to make it more similar. I've done like the bulk, I guess, of the edit. Now I'm just going to add a few things to make it more similar. So I'm just going to adjust these um, keyframes for the actual like arrows. And I'm just going to move the keyframes closer to the start so and then they like they, they move faster and I'm also going to add the glow effect onto the actual text I'm going to increase the glow and I'll make it around like 200 maybe maybe 170 actually and I'll make it very very subtle so like 0.1 or even like maybe 0.2 intensity and that's how subtle it's going to be it's 
extremely subtle if you look at the original video you can barely see it but i'll just add it as well and then i'm just going to copy this um glow and i'm going to apply it onto both the um dotted lines or the dashed lines as well and also i've just realized that for the actual um like the like dollar bill when all of the layers separate from each other i haven't actually like um animated that all i've done is just made them move like further away from each other so to actually make the movement smoother like it was in the original video i'm just going to find those four keyframes no those eight keyframes i'm going to highlight them I'll press F9, I'll go into the graph editor, and basically I'm just gonna create a peak in a steep peak in the middle, like we've done a few times in this video. So as you can see now they separate in more of a smooth way. But I guess the movement is a bit too fast. So what I'll do is I will also separate these layers, like the four keyframes at the end, just a bit further away from the four keyframes at the start. So and then the movement takes a bit longer and so that the movement isn't so harsh. And I'll pretty much one of the last things I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to search up in the effects and presets posterize time. And in Iman Gatsi's videos, he pretty much always has this posterize time effect, which adds this kind of like laggy low frame rate look. But in his old videos, he it would be like really intense and it would be like really low frame rate. But in this one, it's actually like not very intense at all. So normally the number I'd make around like the frame rate, I'd make around 12. But this time I'm going to make it around 18. Well, actually, yeah, that's not really enough. So I'll make it 16. So as you can see, it's not as intense as it normally is. But yeah, when I play this back, as you can see, there is a very subtle, like low frame rate look, but it's very subtle and it's not even really that noticeable, but it's what it was in the original video. So I'll do it too. And also I have made it so, and then the actual, um, because I've moved around the layers, now the actual um, like correctly box is behind the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight those two layers and I'm just going to move them. So, and then they're above everything else. Well, actually they're above the um, how to invest your money text and below the like top posterized time adjustment layer. And now I'm just gonna adjust the keyframes for the actual correctly box. So I'll just move the position keyframes like a bit closer together. And I'm actually just going to um, move the both of the layers closer to the start as well. So, and then they like transition in a bit sooner. And now I've done that, this is the finished edit. Just a quick reminder about Skillcut. If you are a video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out Skillcut through the top link in the description below.